Hi, I'm Pete Roulon. I'd like to welcome you to another part in this series that seeks to provide you all the information you need to know to pass the Part 107 exam. There is a tremendous amount of content that you may be tested on. The lectures are complete in terms of providing you with all the information you need to answer the question. Today's lecture will be on radio communications. One of the first definitions is ATIS, which is an automatic terminal information service. And it's a recording that some airports broadcast in order to reduce frequency congestion. They broadcast current weather information, active runway information, no TAMs, and other useful pieces of information. Then there's AWOS, Automated Weather Observing System. And this is an airport weather broadcast system that provides continuous real-time information and reports on aircraft weather conditions around that airport. Unicom. This is the universal communications frequency. So the station is an air to ground communications facility operated by a non-traffic control. So it's not operated by ATC. It's operated by a private agency to, to provide advisory service at uncontrolled area domes and airports. It can be both staffed or unstaffed. CTAF, Common Traffic Advisory Frequency. It's a name given to the UHF radio frequency used for air-to-air -air communications in the US, Canada, and Australia non-towered airports, air-to-air, -air, pilot to pilot. Pilots use the common frequency to coordinate their arrivals and departures safely, giving position reports and acknowledging other aircraft in the airfield traffic pattern. Understand CTAF may be a Unicom, Multicom, FSS, or tower frequency and is identified in appropriate aeronautical publication. Throughout this lecture series, I've asked you to buy this book. One of the things that this book is in the test room with you. So once again, I send you to page 1-1, which is Appendix 1. In this area here, you're going to see how to interpret the information surrounding an airport and what each of these symbols and numbers mean. So if they ask you what is the control tower frequency, what is the AWOS frequency, those kind of things. Is it a man tower or unmanned tower? Is it time on and off? All that information that you need to answer questions on this may be found in that figure one, page one one in this book. So the more you know what's in this book, the more you're going to be successful because it is available to you in the test room. So we're going to look here at this example and we're going to look at Hilton Head airport and below it you see a series of numbers and symbol so you may be asked what is the control tower frequency what does a star mean in it what is the frequency for ATIS where do you get that information if you haven't memorized on the table in the book pretty straightforward stuff and so you really don't have to memorize this because you're going to have that book. So you can look at these sectional chart frequencies. So I suggest you go into your book, look at various airports, look at what is the information right below it. Boca Raton Airport, CT, Control Tower. 
What does the star mean? What does the C in a black mean? AWOS, that's the frequency of the weather. What do all those symbols and numbers mean? Because it's all available to you. So if we look here at Fort Lauderdale Executive Airport, the control tower is 120.9. The ATIS is 19986. Fort Lauderdale Hollywood, below it, the second blue arrow, the control tower frequency is 119.3 and ATIS is 135.0. How do we make position reports? What if we're operating in an uncontrolled airspace, class G or class Gulf airspace, or with permission in class E? If you need to make a position report, you would say something like Fort Lauderdale traffic, you have a drone operating three miles west of the field at 300 feet. And I would also announce when it, the mission was terminated. Don't expect a reply. It just gives the pile a heads up. If you're in a controlled environment with permission, have a radio with a control tower frequency and the phone number of the control tower in case you have a flyaway or something changes that you present a hazard it is important for you to be able to report that and having a radio provides you the ability to listen to the aircraft traffic in your area and know what's happening and so you can see and avoid. When you file for a waiver, it will dictate what and whom you need to communicate about your fly. They may tell you to call. They may tell you to announce Fort Lauderdale Tower. This is drone XXX, which is provided on your waiver. We are initiating operations in such and such an area. That is all defined in the waiver documentation. The AFD is the most comprehensive information on a given airport and is provided by the U.S. chart supplement. In that, and there is one in your book if you choose to study it, it is on starting on page 1-2 and continuing on, on to 117. So from 1-2 to 117 is a chart supplement. And if you just kind of run over that, you're going to see a vast amount of information on the airport, its frequencies, so get sort of familiar in that. You, will be, you may be asked to look on a supplement. My memory says that there is one that you have to look on the supplement to get a warning that there's potentially birds near the runway, if I remember that. So here's another example of the chart supplement. And here's another example and it, where the arrow is shows you where the Unicom frequency is. So when you're communicating on the radio, you're going to be not using the letters saying, this is drone X, Y, Z. You're going to be using what I call the military code. It's really called the telephony code. And um, you're using a code which I'm sure you're familiar with a is Alpha, B is Bravo, C is Charlie, D is Delta, E is Echo, Foxtrot, Golf, Hotel, on down. There will be a question on the data bank about how to communicate 
your aircraft ID in this kind of uh, code for each of the letters. So just be kind of familiar with that. A short module, important module, doesn't represent a large part of the test questions. I would study this to make sure you understand the acronyms, how to read the sectional chart around the airport, what frequencies, what does the star mean, what does this um, C surrounded in black mean. And that should get you pretty far ahead on radio communications. I thank you for your continued interest. I invite you to review all the modules in this series. In the description below is the links to the appropriate modules. Subscribe so you know I am in the process of updating all the modules. So you want to know when a new module comes online because it may contain new information that is on the test. So it's important in all of these Watch the entire thing. You may want to take notes. It's a good way for an adult to improve their retention of information by hearing and then writing it down. I thank you for your time. I look forward to seeing you back in another series on passing your FAA test. Good luck.